Okay, so I'm out visiting my parents, um, doing a sort of AV upgrade for them. So I do apologise for any bad lighting, there's not really much here. I'm sort of sitting in a cupboard with a bunch of random lights. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a sort of AV upgrade for them. So what they have is they have this Sky Box, which is a Sky HD box located in a cupboard. This then routes to a TV over a big long 10 meter HDMI cable, as you can see here. It comes round out there and down some trunking, and that leads to the TV. Then to control it with the remote control, because it's located in a cupboard, they're just using the old-fashioned Sky Magic Eye system that's been around for years, which sends the infrared signal down the coax cable, so this just connects to the back of the sky box. The problem is that they're wanting to use um, add another TV in a different room to the same sky box. The problem with this is that the sky box only has one output for a Magic Eye. It has two coax connections, but only one can power these. So this means that they've currently got it connected, but they're using terrible coax picture quality, and they don't have remote control functionality in the other room. So what I'm going to be setting up is these. These are branded as AGP Tech, I think, on Amazon. They're about £30, which is pretty good value for something like this. And they route an HDMI signal over a regular Cat6 cable. So that is pretty neat. Um, I'll actually be using Cat5 here. They're rated up to 60 metres of Cat6. Uh, of Cat um, Cat5, when I tested it, it didn't work on 40 metres. It started art artifacting. But I've tried it with 17 metres, which is what we're using here, and it's fine. Obviously, if you're installing this and you're buying everything fresh, yeah, buy the Cat6 cable. I just had a lot of Cat5 e spared, so thought, may as well try it. They're actually really nice devices, so you've got two of them. Um, they're all metal, and they've got these screw holes so you can mount them to a wall. That's a really nice touch. They feel really solid. And yeah, for £30, you can't really go wrong. What you also have here is they have remote control functionality. So you have these little devices. So this is an infrared receiver, and this is an infrared transmitter. So what you do is you connect this to the... Um, one of these and put it in front of the skybox. Then you connect this to the device that's at the remote TV. This will pick up the remote signal and this will emit it and control the device. So this will send the remote signal out and the skybox will pick it up and act as though it's a remote control being pointed at it. Also important to note that this doesn't actually work only work with skyboxes, it'll work with any HDMI device that uses an infrared remote control. The devices also use a power adapter, just a regular 5 volt supply to connect to the wall. Also, because the Skybox only has a single HDMI output, I'll also be using this, which is a cheap HDMI splitter from Amazon, branded eCynic. Easy for your life. Yes, never heard of that, but it was about a tenner, and it's just single HDMI input to dual output. And again, it's quite nice, it's all metal, which is a nice touch. This also requires an external power supply, but what they've actually done that I really like is it's actually USB. So it's a regular barrel jack on that side, so you could use a wall wart if you needed to, but yeah, it's a USB connector, so you could plug that into a USB phone charger. Or in this case, I'll be plugging it straight into the USB port in the back of the skybox, because why not? It's not used for anything else. And then this here is just a access point I set up recently, so it's acting as a wireless station, so the skybox can get on demand over the wireless network. This is an older skybox, it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. So what I'll be doing now is I'll hook it all up, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so now I've got the end of the skybox hooked up. Again, really apologise for the lighting, I'm currently using that, it's not ideal. Um, so what we have here is we have the splitter, so the video comes out the skybox, into the splitter. This is the existing HDMI cable that goes to the TV. Then this pink one comes round here and into the transmit device. So you can see it says sender on it. And then we have the Cat5e cable that runs through to the next room. Now I realise I forgot to actually mention why you'd want to use something like this over an HDMI cable. The main benefit is that a Cat5 or Cat6 cable is really easy to run. You can buy big reels of it, it can run long lengths, and you can crimp the connectors on yourselves, which is what I've done here. Meaning all I needed to do was drill a small hole to feed the cable through, and then put the connector on the other end. In contrast, an HDMI cable, you'd have to drill like holes capable of fitting the entire HDMI connection on at every point, and they can only really run up to about 20 metres, whereas this can do 60. So that's another benefit. Also, in many buildings, you'll already have Cat5 or Cat6 cabling in the walls, so you can just run this, so it means you can use the existing cabling. It is however important to note that this isn't like a network device, you couldn't run this connection through a switch, it is a totally separate protocol. So you can't run it through any sort of switching or routing, it purely has to be a point-to-point -point link of cable. So that's a disadvantage, but that's what all these devices will do, so make sure you don't sort of expect this device to do something that it isn't capable of. And yep, so the, and then we have this device just plugged into the wall over there, that extension lead, and then as I said the splitter is just powered off the Skybox's USB port down here. So you see nothing, the Skybox is switched off at the moment, so we just have 
no light, no, no green light on the input to the splitter and the link light is blinking on the sender. If we switch the skybox on, you'll see, there we go, the HDMI outputs come on and the green lights come on the splitter and this is now saying link and you can probably hear the TV in the background. So that's working. So what I'll now do is go and hook up the other end. Oh yeah, also this here is the IR transmitter. I'll need to find a way to position this, I'll need to play about the sensitivity and see how, where I can put it. But yeah, that should send signals to the front of the skybox, so it's currently just hanging there for now. Okay, so I've just done some experimentation with this infrared emitter here, and it actually seems to be really effective, like it works at loads of different angles. So what I've done here is I've just stuck it to the front of the skybox, below the infrared re receiver, which is somewhere in this region here, and it works flawlessly, so that's great, so you don't have to have it, you know, sitting, you know, way in front of it in some impractical position. Sticking it to the front of the box actually worked like really well, so obviously your mileage may vary, it might you know, vary based on your appliance, but this actually seems to work very effectively for the skybox. Okay, so here we are on the other end with everything set up. So here is the TV on the wall, and down the back of the TV we can see all the equipment. So we have the HDMI receiver unit itself, this is the Cat6 or Cat5 connection coming in, it comes through the wall over there. Here we have the connections for the power and the IR receiver. And then this is the HDMI cables to the TV. All works pretty neatly. It's just mounted on this old TV bracket with zip ties. This TV bracket was already here, so you may as well use it. Well, of course, you could just screw it to the wall directly if you didn't have this, which would be much neater. And that works really well. So you know, if we have the cable here, the cable comes over into this, which is the IR receiver. This is the only complaint I can really see with this, is the way this sticks on. The sticky fixer sort of falls off quite easily. And being white, you can sort of see it quite noticeably against the black TV. That's really the only complaint I have about the whole system, so I mean that's not bad, you can easily fix that. So here we have a Sky Remote. Obviously it doesn't come with one, you have to supply your own, but if we switch the Skybox on, in a few seconds you'll see the Sky will come up. There we go. Um, and then as you can see you can just quite easily control the Sky Remote, well, the Skybox with the remote very easily. So that's pretty impressive. It also works at a really good angle, so I can point it that way and it'll still... Or in fact, I can even point it, you know, like I'm currently pointing it basically behind me, like that, and it still picks it up, which is really impressive. That's way better than the Magic Eye system. You know, that works very easily. You know, you can point it pretty much anywhere and it'll work, which is... works really well. So yeah, I'm very impressed with this device, so... Yeah, it's a great device, and for £30 it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. And you can also visit my website at CameronGray.me and follow me on Twitter at CameronGray1515. Thanks for watching.